When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John 19.30 Dear Jesus, there are truly no words to thank you enough. So in these moments, when we want to tell you how much we love you and how grateful we are for what you did on the cross, please listen to our hearts. You went through so much pain and suffering and finished the task. Because of that, we get to spend forever with you. Thank you for being our rescuer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com slash blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. Jesus' death and burial. In our last story, Jesus was taken before Pilate and beaten The crowd demanded Jesus be crucified, and Pilate washed his hands clean and released Jesus to be crucified. In this story, we will learn about the death and burial of Jesus, as inspired by the Gospels. Hi friends, it's Julianne Thompson, guest hosting for Julia Jeffress Sadler, and I am so glad you're here for another episode of the Kids Bible in a Year podcast. Today, God's great, perfect plan is accomplished, and we say an earthly goodbye to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. He has taught us so much. Thankfully, we know the end of the story, so although we feel sad, we have hope. Jesus is defeating death, Satan, sadness, and sin for good. He's finishing the task he was sent to do, and his deep forever love for us is holding him to that cross. Listen in. The soldiers took Jesus and prepared him to be crucified. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out to a place called the Place of the Skull. After a while, Jesus could not carry his cross. So a man named Simon had been told by the Roman soldiers to carry Jesus' cross behind him. There was a crowd that formed, and a woman began to cry out for Jesus. The Lord reassured her that everything was going to be all right. And instead of crying for me, cry for yourself and your children. Then, at the place of the skull, Soldiers crucified him there along with two criminals, one on each side of Jesus. The crowd was mocking him. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. The soldiers took his clothes and divided it up between them by casting lots which fulfilled the prophecy that said they would do so. The only thing that they left Jesus with was his underwear. Pilate had a sign made in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, so that all the people can read it walking by, which says, Jesus, the King of Jews. A high priest argued with Pilate about not writing that he is the King of Jews because he has only claimed to be the King of Jews. Pilate then simply stated that what he wrote is final. The people nearby were taunting Jesus, saying that if he was God's son, then he should be able to get himself down from the cross. One criminal said the same things as the crowd, but the other criminal turned to Jesus and said to remember him, and Jesus said that he will be joined with him in heaven. Near the cross were his mother, his aunt, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the wife of Clopas. Jesus told his mother, that John would be his mother's son, and from there on out, that is how it was. Then there was darkness all around, and at the ninth hour Jesus cried out to the Father, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many people there thought that he was crying out to Elijah, 
So they immediately tried to give him some wine to drink. They soaked a sponge with sour wine. And when he had gotten the drink, another person said for them to wait to see if Elijah would come to rescue him. Then Jesus yelled out one more time, Father, I give you my life. It is now finished. Then he gave his spirit to the Lord and passed away. When this happened, the curtain in the temple was torn in half. The earth began to shake. Rocks were split in two. Tomb doors opened up and some of the saints that were dead were raised to life. The Roman army commander saw these things happen and he cried out that Jesus was truly the Son of God. There were three women present as well who ministered to Jesus in his last day. Since the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies to be left up during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to let the bodies be taken down. They took the criminals down, broke their legs, and then moved on to Jesus. It was obvious that he was dead, so they instead pierced him with a spear, and blood and water came out of his body. This fulfilled the scripture that Jesus' bones would not be broken, and another scripture states that his body will be pierced. Joseph was a follower of Jesus and asked Pilate for his body. He feared the Jewish leaders, so when Pilate agreed, he took the body quickly. Nicodemus brought myrrh and aloes, and they wrapped his body with these elements and linen. They then placed Jesus in a new tomb that no one had ever been in near a garden. This was the day of preparation, and because the tomb was close, they placed Jesus there. All we can say is thank you, Lord. Our story opens with the Roman soldiers taking Jesus away to be crucified. Now we've talked about this word a lot lately, crucifixion. But what does it really mean? This was a form of punishment for criminals on that day. If you committed a bad enough crime, you were sentenced to death. You would be forced to carry a long, heavy wooden beam to the place of your death. That beam would eventually be attached to a longer one that was stuck into the ground. There, you would hang in front of the whole town with your name and the crime on a sign above your head. Eventually, you would no longer be able to breathe. In today's story, we hear that Jesus was having a hard time carrying his cross beam. Surely by now, he had been beaten so badly that it was hard to walk, let alone carry something that heavy. A man named Simon walked behind Jesus carrying his cross for him. We also heard of a woman crying out and Jesus comforting her. Even in those terrible moments, he was thinking of others and healing their pain. The Bible tells us that two criminals were crucified next to Jesus. One of them clearly believed in him and he said, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. What Jesus says to this criminal is so important. He says, surely I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. This means that even though this man had probably lived a very sinful life and done very bad things, even though he had never followed or believed in Jesus until these final moments of his life, Jesus heard his cry and forgave him. While we were on earth, it is never too late to turn to Jesus. At the cross, we see many Old Testament prophecies coming true. Prophecies about the soldiers casting lots for his clothing and others about his unbroken bones and his pierced side. Jesus was making true every word of God all the way back to Genesis. And again, as the people laughed at him and yelled mean things to him, he loved them to the end. He asked his father to forgive them because they did not know what they were doing. I love how scripture describes the woman at the cross. They loved Jesus and ministered to him in those final hours. Jesus told John to take care of his mother. Oh, how painful this must have been for Mary. 
I wonder if she was thinking back to years earlier as a young teenage girl, an angel appeared to her. Did she remember? His birth was a miracle from God. I wonder if she had thought about the words of Jesus when he was just 12 years old and she thought he had gotten lost. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? The Bible tells us she had held all those times close to her heart. I'm sure they rushed through her mind in these painful moments of his death. Then there were the disciples. Perhaps they were replaying the words from Jesus just hours before in their minds. This is my commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. I have to wonder if all of this was starting to make sense. Everything he told them that was coming, everything he predicted that would happen, as Jesus suffered, they must have felt so very helpless and sad. As Jesus cried out and gave up his spirit, the earth shook, the rock split, and the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This is such an important part of this passage. If you remember, when they built the temple, there was a curtain that separated sinful people from a holy God. The only person allowed beyond the curtain into the holy place was the high priest. By tearing the curtain, God was saying, no longer do you need a priest to get to me. Jesus has made everything new. He has paid the debt for your sin. Today's story ends with Joseph, a follower of Jesus and his friend Nicodemus, gently taking Jesus' body to a nearby tomb. They were all in shock. How could it be over? What they didn't know was that in three days, Jesus would be alive. Alive in Galilee and alive in their hearts. Thanks for listening to the greatest story ever told. The story that changed everything and helped us back to God. Let's say it like we mean it today. The Bible is the best story ever told. It is God's story to you and it's all true. Did our podcast resonate with you? Invite someone you care about to tune in as well. Together we can uplift kids and parents alike. Thanks for listening to Pray.com Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, unapologetic God's truth on today's topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.